Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. So today's video is going to be rather fun. We're going to be doing a ranking system of all of the best slash top dividend ETFs. Now, of course, I don't have every single dividend ETF here, but what I did, I utilized different lists like this that show you the most popular dividend ETFs along with buy right ETFs that use covered calls to have high dividend yields. Now I'm fully aware that I can't make everyone happy, but I have 11 solid names here and let's run through them really quickly. So the first one up here is SCHD. We can see the past one year performance, the dividend yield and the expense ratio, along with a little quick fund description. That's followed by VYM, another classic fund over here. Then we have VIG, which is a dividend growth ETF, DGRO, which is another dividend growth ETF. Down here we have Noble, which is a very popular dividend aristocrat ETF. That's followed by DIVB, which is a dividend and stock buyback ETF. And I thought it'd be very interesting to see how this fund fits into this whole equation. And then down here we have all the buy right ETFs, beginning with NUSI, followed with XYLD, we have JEPI, XYLG, and Divo. So sit back, get comfortable, hope you guys enjoy the video. Of course, if you do, I appreciate a like on the video, even subscribing to the channel. But let's get into this. Okay, so I'm going to be placing these ETFs on this ranking chart right here. And S stands for super, it's the absolute best rank, followed by A, B, C, D, so on and so on. Now this goes without saying that this is going to be subjective, I am ranking different ETFs. But I'm gonna do my best to utilize logic and reason when ranking these different picks. Also, I think I've reviewed every single one of these ETFs before on the channel, so I'm going to run through these relatively quickly. So let's begin up here with the classic SCHD. In the past one year, the performance, the total return that is, is 9.31%. And just for reference, the S&P 500 over the past one year has a return of 8.6%. So keep that in mind. So SCHD tracks a market cap weight index of 100 dividend paying US equities. That's the quick one line description of this fund. But of course, it's very in depth and they do utilize a lot of different metrics like financial ratios to indicate the quality of their picks. In terms of the dividend yield, it's 2.88% at the current moment, and the expense ratio is very low at 0.06%. So what is there to say about SCHD? Of course, the popularity of this fund speaks for itself. It is a very high quality, well-performing dividend ETF. It doesn't have the absolute best performance, and the dividend yield isn't super crazy high. So for that reason, I'm not going to give it the super rating, but it is without question going to be in the A category. Next up, we have VYM from Vanguard, and the fund description is that this tracks the FTSE High Dividend Yield Index. The index selects high dividend paying US companies, excluding REITs, and weights them by market cap. So in comparison to SCHD that uses financial ratios, this method is a lot more simple. The expense ratio is also very low at 0.06%, and the dividend yield is also similar to SCHD at 2.76%. And we can see that the performance over the past one year is a little bit better at 13.4%. So considering how the expense ratio, the dividend yield, and the returns are basically the same as SCHD, I have to also give it an A rating. Next we have VIG, and this is kind of the companion ETF to VYM because VYM is high dividend yield and VIG is dividend growth. The mechanics are pretty similar. So VIG tracks a market cap weighted index of US companies that have increased their annual dividends for 10 or more consecutive years. The expense ratio is the same at 0.06%. But here, the dividend yield is only 1.78%, and I think largely because of that, the total returns over the past one year is a little bit less, 8.21%. We all know that the market over the past couple of months has been extremely choppy, and in a market situation like this, having a high dividend yield can be the driving source of return, and because the dividend yield here is low, the overall return isn't anything special. So I know VIG is one of the most popular dividend ETFs on the market, but I'm gonna go ahead and give it a B rating, which is still very good. That's why it made my list to begin with. But when comparing it against these other dividend ETFs, it's just slightly behind them. Now moving on, we have DGRO, and this is from iShares. And DGRO tracks an index of US stocks that are selected by dividends, 
dividend growth and payout ratio than weighted by dividend dollars. And you're going to notice that between DGRO and VIG, they're extremely similar funds. In fact, the total return over the past one year is 8.8%, which is almost identical to VIG. The yield is also low, being a dividend growth focused ETF, and the expense ratio is only 0.08%. So I think it's pretty obvious that DGRO belongs right next to VIG in the B row. Below that, we have Noble. This is the ProShares S&P 500 Dividend Aristocrats ETF. And here's the fund description. So this tracks an equal weighted index of the S&P 500 constituents that have increased dividend payments annually for at least 25 years. That 25 years of consecutive annual dividend payments is what makes a company a dividend aristocrat. Now, when it comes to this ETF, the performance over the past one year has been very excellent, 10.98%, which is outpacing the S&P 500. But I'm a little split here because the yield is only 1.92%. And again, this is a list of the best dividend ETFs. And also the expense ratio is pretty high, 0.35%. So in terms of the rating, I want to put it in the A row along with SCHD and VYM because the performance is similar, but the low dividend yield and the high expense ratio make me want to knock it down to the B row next to DGRO. Because in comparison to VIG and DGRO, Noble has a very similar dividend yield, a little bit better performance, but a higher expense ratio. So I think it kind of evens itself out. All right, next we have DIVB, which is a dividend and share buyback ETF. So DIVB tracks an index of all cap US stocks that have a history of dividend payments and or share buybacks. So that's a pretty simple concept. Both dividends and share buybacks are two ways a company can directly return profits to shareholders. And both the dividend yield and the expense ratio are pretty similar to Noble, along with the total returns over the past one year. So no surprise here, this belongs in the B row right next to Noble and this B row is getting kind of crowded. Okay, so those are all of the traditional equity dividend ETFs, and we can see how I chose to rank them right here. Of course, they're all very high quality, but I think SCHD and VYM are just that much better than the rest. And that leaves us with the buy right ETFs, and these use some kind of option strategy to hopefully boost returns, beginning with NUSI. So this is an actively managed portfolio of stocks included in the NASDAQ 100 index combined with an option caller. The fund seeks to generate current income with some downside protection. And for those of you that have been following NUSI, you know that as of lately, the downside protection half of this ETF has really not been working. Now, I did just make a video reviewing NUSI and explaining why this might be happening, so definitely check out that video on the channel. But the situation here is that the returns over the past one year is negative 8.5%. The expense ratio is pretty high at 0.68%, but the dividend yield is very meaningful at 9.22%. But because of the performance and the lack of downside protection, even though it's supposed to have it, I have to put it down here in the C row. Now, some of you guys might be saying that it belongs down here in the D row, but I don't think NUSI is that bad. Yes, it's just performing pretty bad right now, but back in 2020, people loved this ETF because it actually did its job. So I do have hope in the future that NUSI can turn around, and in the meantime, still is paying a pretty high monthly dividend. And that's followed by XYLD. And you can also substitute RYLD and QYLD, but personally, XYLD is my favorite. So this tracks the S&P 500 stocks and sells one month at the money call options on up to 100% of each stock. And what this means is that this strategy is just used to generate income off of the S&P 500. You're not actually investing in the equities here. And that's why the yield is a massive 9.71%. And the expense ratio is exactly what you would expect at 0.6% for a fund like this. And this strategy of generating high monthly levels of income is proving itself to be effective even in adverse market conditions. And over the past one year, the returns are 14.22%. That's close to double the returns of the S&P 500 itself. So for this fund, I want to put it in the B row, but based off of the performance, it belongs in the A row right alongside SCHD and VYM. Compared to the other two funds in this row, the total returns is higher and the dividend yield is significantly higher, but the expense ratio is also more, so that's why I think it belongs right alongside them. And that leaves us with just three ETFs, JEPI, XYLG, 
and Divo. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put all three of these up here in the super row because in my opinion, these are the best of the best when it comes to dividend and income ETFs. So beginning with Jeppy, this is an actively managed fund that invests in large cap US stocks and equity linked notes. ELNs. It seeks to provide similar returns to the S&P 500 index with lower volatility and monthly income. The yield is currently 7.62%. The expense ratio is pretty modest at 0.35%. And the returns over the past one year is 13.24%. These are all remarkable numbers especially considering the market environment that we find ourselves in. XYLG is the next fund here, and this is very similar to XYLD, but I think it's a better all-around ETF because it gives you half the exposure to the equities of the S&P 500, and they write calls on the other half of the equities to generate income. So it's a super basic strategy, but the returns over the past one year is 11%, with almost a 6% monthly dividend yield, with an expense ratio of 0.6%. And finally, that leaves us with Divo. So this is another actively managed ETF that provides income by selecting stocks from the S&P 500 index overlaid with a tactical call writing strategy. So in comparison to the systematic approach in XYLG, this is a more active and managed approach. Although the returns are similarly great at 11.36% over the past one year, with a dividend yield of 4.88% and an expense ratio of 0.55%. But there you have it guys, this is my ranking of the top dividend ETFs on the market right now in my opinion. I hope you guys did enjoy. Leave a comment down below on your thoughts on this whole topic and what funds are your favorite. If you're still watching and enjoyed, I appreciate a like on the video, subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next one.